thank you everybody for coming back to another episode of Cobra TV. Okay, today on Cobra TV, we're going to take a look at the gameplay from the Stephen Colbert show and kind of like walk through it. I, 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 I looked at it a bunch of times and I haven't seen a whole lot of new things, but there are a couple talking points that are worth pointing out. And with me today, we got Vertical Speed and uh, uh, Cameron. Cameron, welcome to the show, bud. Hey, thanks for having me. Not a problem at all. So before we get into this, what did you guys think of the... Um, the gameplay from the Stephen Colbert. I, I see a definite improvement from E3. Yeah, it looks pretty smooth, and I, it's kind of funny. I was sitting at a buddy's place. I was, I was watching this on on TV, and I was so close to just running over to the airport. I had a flight to catch, but I'm like, no, I gotta watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Though. I it it wasn't what I was expecting, but. I mean, that's the problem when you expect something is you generally get something else. So, right. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy with what we got. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, the joking with the shooting and naming and the mine. <laughs> you know, that was pretty funny. <laughs> All right. So now John Doe went to the live viewing at the Tech Fest at the New Yorker Festival. And um, as far as the, the panels go, he said the first one down here on the uh, the right hand side actually shows the chemical compositions of the planet as you're going onto the planet. Mm -hmm. it I shows think that's it, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it shows it all in real time. And that uh, we know the next one um, shows the speed, although I don't know what the other stuff is um, in relation to the speed or whatever. And I imagine that the one over here on the far left has something to do, it's got to have something to do with the uh, with scanning, you know, for... Yeah like uh, resources or whatever yeah and it's one... got like that cube looking thing which there's been some screenshots and, and even video where when he scans and resources pop up as actual cubes so I think that's might be related to that right yeah and then the next one I'm not entirely sure what that one could be at all yeah. but uh, as we start playing this clip here you if you take a look at the um the radar there's just a ton of stuff on that radar yeah there really is and there's something that i didn't notice at e3 was this little side thing here i thought it was new when i first seen it on the stephen colbert show um but i went back and i looked at the e3 footage and it was there too i wonder what this could be does it change i didn't notice that before i didn't go back and well i did go back and look but i wasn't looking to see if they were different or not yeah <clears throat> But uh, this ship over here, this big old freighter, freighter ship, I haven't seen one colored before. They're either like uh, blue and gray or black. Yeah, so they might have something. They might have something to do with the factions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and as it goes, the the animations of these um, ships flying by are so much better now. Before it really had like a Star Fox feel to it, but uh, <laughs> yeah. now it looks pretty realistic. I like that, and the terrain here as we're coming up onto the planet looks so realistic too. A lot better uh, detail. Yeah, actually, that's I think something that John Doe said was that the draw distance seemed to be really improved. Right. Yeah, and it looks like you know compared to the the early videos where you would fly onto the planet and you would. You would fly into the planet and you would get to the surface really, really fast. It looks yeah. like he's improved on lengthening that time. Sean Murray's probably watched some Cobra TV. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it shows him shooting through an asteroid, which the rocks disappear immediately. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's uh, something that is just in the dev mode or something. He just doesn't feel like it's important enough to keep floating around all right so as he flies through it it doesn't look like a really big hole but i think the rock is bigger than what we think it is because as he gets closer to it it really puts it to scale like his ship actually does look like it can fit through it if you oh, yeah. stop and go through it it looks like a really big hole but back there it didn't all right so he scans the planet 
and he talks about the points or it's points of interest and then he talks about how he doesn't want to really give them away um but as we know from the previous interview when you're coming onto a planet you kind of have like a an autopilot as you're going on to the planet it kind of corrects you so you don't just smack right down into the surface yeah it sort of like levels the ship out or whatever right you still have control over it because we in one of the videos we can see him kind of like moving as he's being corrected and then here so, we have well back up a little bit there i was trying to compare the bottom right screen to the uh atmospheric makeup of what actually pops up across the the view can oh, you actually see that just a, like a couple seconds yeah like right there I guess you can't really see it. So 88% high lease. I guess that kind of looks like 88% down there. There seems to be three. Three what? You, you... Uh, th like like three... Uh... <clears throat> oh, I see. Right here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm comparing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I'm just... Yeah, maybe there's more information on this panel than what's on here. Maybe this yeah. is like a quick... Uh, yeah, the could... two things you need to be able to breathe or not be on a toxic planet and there's more details here yeah and so here we have that famous flag with that exact yeah. same symbol now what we have to remember is that uh they're using a demo build now they might use at the same assets for that build or um this flag could actually have some meaning to the lore in no man's sky yeah And just uh, typical mining here and um, just really cool animals. One of the things I noticed, there's still a little bit of pop in with the animals that we've seen at E3, but it's nowhere near as bad. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool that we're getting uh, glimpses of more alien looking creatures the more that we see exactly like over these past months, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you see here, these elements that he just collected from that uh, green crystal, they, it looks like they, they fill up. Right. See how this one has a level here and this one's a little bit lower. So they must have their own capacity. Like, you know, when they carry so many and that must be the jetpack or not the jetpack, but well, maybe, yeah, the jetpack. Hmm. Cause I'm sure it has a place to carry things in it. I don't know, yeah. Cameron. What do you think? Yeah, that's that's my thought. There's like a, you know, a maximum inventory limit that's yeah. in that jetpack. Right, right. And it's really cool how you can see this space station from the planet here. Yeah. Because you can see the the entrance to it right here. Oh yeah. You got a good eye, man. I. <laughs> <laughs> You've just watched it a thousand times. Since I, I have. <laughs> I've been watching and trying to think of, you know, what can I yeah. say about this? What what yeah, is yeah. So are these trees or are these rocks? Yeah. Cause for a second they just look like big fat trees, but I guess they're rocks. To the right there. Oh to here? No. Yeah. More more right. The big the big bubble looking thing. Oh, I don't know. That could be a rock formation. But it could be yeah. a tree. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Look at that stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of my cousin. <laughs> Reminds you of your cousin. Yeah. What was Kangles. that in the background? Oh, probably just an ice cap. Mm. All right, so here we are on another planet. This kind of looks like that one from the two or five planets yeah. um, that I like so much, but it's it's not exactly the same same one. They gave the names in that. That was the uh, IGN thing, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Did they did they name the planets in that? I, I don't know, but it's, it yeah. was it was not called Loik. I can't no. remember what it. I, was. Yeah, you're right. I don't remember that name at all. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. the cool thing about this right here is this creature that the mouse is hovering over right there. Yeah. Right. It's a two-legged bipedal. As you're seeing it here, it's like bobbing his head up and down. <laughs> then it turns over to look, I guess, at these ships that are going by. And it just starts uh, chucking along. <laughs> so, 
I think that is really, really <laughs> cool. I wonder if that was, uh, I don't know, I remember somebody was watching it and they said Teletubbies. Exactly. And what, you know, what's really cool about this is that, you know, Sean Murray said that there's no NPCs in the game and he took it as a shop owner saying, welcome to my shop, you know, like you would right, get in yeah. Skyrim or whatever. Um, and other people are always asking, are there going to be um, primitive life forms? And to me, this right here looks like a primitive life form. And if it isn't, it's enough for me. Is it wearing clothes? I can't really... I don't know. It kind of looks like it does have a red vest. It does. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, we, I think we saw this thing at E3 as well. It does look like it's wearing a red vest. Yeah. No, this was... Uh, the one at E3 kind of looked like a raccoon slash Ewok. Right, but it was two-legged as well. Yeah, Operate. it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. This one looks a little bit more chunky. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does look like a red vest. <laughs> this one over here, you can see it, too. <laughs> All right, pretty cool. And also, the animations of the animals seem like they've drastically improved. Yeah. See, <laughs> I wonder, there's, there's more, there's a dot here on this line, and then there's a circle here, so I wonder what else can open up as far mm -hmm. as a panel because it looks like there's more otherwise why have it extended that far yeah so this is obviously like the visor of the space suit right probably yeah yeah so there's got to be something else there you're right oh, yeah. and what's really cool here is these flying looking jellyfish type things <laughs> yeah So that's pretty cool. And that really brings me to another point we were trying to make months and months and months ago about, you know, how people keep saying, well, the life forms are all going to look the same. There's just going to be different colors here, different colors there. We're going to come across life forms that don't even, that we weren't even thinking of, you know, like these little flying jellyfish looking things. Yeah. We, the, the variety of the types of life that we can come across are just going to blow our minds. I guarantee it. Yeah, uh, and even just the trees and like the vegetation and just this view right here, like I'm seeing what two or three different types of trees. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. When he was talking about the, uh, he was doing like a tech demo, right? And he was showing that you know the when you do your M MMO, right? You've got your sliders. Hey, I want to make my nose bigger, my ears bigger. He yeah. was saying they have that, yeah. but it, like. You know, I've done hundreds of thousands of combinations. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you're going to get creatures that look the same, that have different shaped bodies, and then any permutation thereof, right? Exactly. Even right. animals of the same species are going to be a little bit shaped a little bit differently. Yeah. And didn't he say something about he? They found that bug about f having fish, you know, fish fly, and that, you know, that was something they didn't really know was going to happen until they saw it. Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's those those little jellyfish guys. Exactly. <laughs> and this planet here seems pretty cool. It seems like an ice type planet. And there's that flag again, right there. Yeah, yeah. So I guarantee you, it's got it has to have something to do with the lore. Yeah, I do agree with you there. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, now, I, <laughs> these structures in the back this here and this one um yeah. one of the things sean murray has been fond of is not putting something into the game that doesn't have a good gameplay element to it and when ryan landed on that little building that building wanted him to interact with it a lot of people right. thought that it was uh his ship wanting him to interact with a ship um, but when he walked back and got into the ship several times throughout that whole series, it never wanted to interact. So it was the building. So these all here, hmm. I guarantee you, have a gameplay element to them. Right. And we get to see the Sentinel again. I've seen a lot of people in the comments, they weren't happy with how artificial uh, it looked when it turns. Yeah, it kind of stumbled and just kind of spun on its... Yeah, like right there. Exactly. But if you think about 
it's a robot that it doesn't have joints like we do so it's it's got to turn in some way or form you know what i mean it's uh-huh. look at the look at the textures at the bottom right <laughs> those triangles let's get past that <laughs> <laughs> i just noticed it. <laughs> that happens in every single game though exactly whatever, whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. i just i just didn't i'm not i've never watched this and paused it frame by frame before so yeah that's when you find these little glitchy things but whatever right not too concerned so yeah i'm i i don't think it's just a i don't think it's um bad development or bad coding or even because the animals don't move like that so i think that they made the sentinels move like that on purpose because the animals they they turn realistically but the the sentinel i mean how else would it turn Yeah, it might have something to do with because it's so tall. Yeah, and and those little motions are sort of exaggerated along the like length I of said, its they body. Don't, yeah, they don't have you know hip joints to rotate on and yeah. like a animal or a person would, right? Exactly. So here's that um, flag again. Stupid flag. And it kind of you know what it looks like. It almost looks like it has something to do with the portals. Because if you were to go yeah, back, that was look, my thought. Yeah, if you were to go back and look at the portals, I think they have something like that around them. And look at this uh, planet here. You yeah. can barely see it through the haze of the atmosphere. And then here we are on a rainy planet. I think this is my favorite planet of this whole demo. I, you know what? Me too. And look yeah. at the way the trees are just soaked in water and they're just hanging. Yeah, because this reminds me, I, when I wrote some of that fan fiction that we have on ExploreNMS.com, I wrote about this uh, rainy planet where everything was wet and just soaked and drip, dripping everywhere. And, th- and that's what this reminds me of, is that little short little chapter thing I wrote there. Right. <laughs> Rain. You got these little mushrooms growing on the uh, bottoms of the tree trunks. I wonder if you can collect those too. <clears throat> I wonder. A little dino. <laughs> I mean, just look how that thing moves, man. I mean, just the animations just lumbering are just, along. Yeah. The animations are perfect. It almost looks like CGI. We got one of the beacons there. Beacons, yeah. And I like how these... Just the formations of some of these planets just absolutely look alien. You know, you got these little tall, just weird rock formations with trees grown on top of it. It's pretty cool. This is the planet we started on, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was a big chunk of those crystals in one spot. Did right. you see that? Yeah. And we got a, another fleet up here. Yeah. Which I cannot wait to, like, you know, run into these fleets actually warring with each other and just getting into a big space battle. You would? You would jump in? Yeah. And, and battle in. with you? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd find out who the bad guys are, and then I'd side with them. I think I'd just sit back and scavenge. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I plan on doing that too. Then we jump out to the star map, the galactic map. And this is just one galaxy. Yeah. Wow. All those places. And it's really cool to see the the different star types. There's a green, yellow, reddish. But 
but that's pretty much it they don't show too much more um there, like i said in the beginning there really wasn't that much to show or to even talk about with the gameplay except it does look a lot better than e3 it really does it it doesn't look like you know to someone who is looking at e3 and just too quickly and then look at this one you really can't tell a difference but you really can if you look hard enough yeah i agree all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and end the show um thank you so much for coming on cameron i appreciate it yeah you bet and thank you vertical speed no problem buddy all right and uh stay tuned for the next um planet nomads video i'm going to be making another one and a little bit shorter version so people can bite on it yeah all right guys i'll see you guys uh next time until next time <laughs> until next time <laughs> see you man see you buddy bye bye cameron see bye. you cameron <laughs>